All over the world, the remnants of war are still lying around. Not just abandoned missile sites or Cold War bunkers, but actual munitions. How long are these going to be a danger? Hello everyone, thank you for watching D News Today. I'm Trace. When I was a Boy Scout, we used to go to military bases and stay in World War II barracks. Once in a while, the guys and I would find live rounds. And once, a dud grenade was really cool. Obviously, we secretly tried to keep them, but when the adults discovered what we'd found, a safety conversation unavoidably ensued. But is there a real concern here? Are old explosives dangerous? The first explosives were invented in China in the 10th century when someone found a mixture of potassium nitrate charcoal and sulfur exploded with an energetic force. We call that black powder today because Europeans later converted it into a weapon of war. The 19th century saw a flurry of explosive chemicals including nitroglycerin, dynamite, and smokeless gunpowder. Dynamite, invented by Alfred Nobel, founder of the Nobel Prizes, is a high explosive. It's highly unstable nitroglycerin mixed with clay, wood, or some other inert agent called a dope. Before the invention of dynamite, most explosives were either relatively slow burning, great for projectiles like fireworks, but not useful for blowing things up. These are called low explosives. Low explosives burn at their surface, slowly, in thousandths of a second. Whereas high explosives ignite throughout their composition, very rapidly, millionths of a second. Dynamite was one of the first popular high explosives and was so good at blowing stuff up, it became popular in mining, construction, demolition, and of course, military. In movies, high explosives often require a very important plot point detonator. These are called primary explosives and are used with certain high explosives that require more oomph to ignite. C4, for example, is one of those. C4 is relatively inert until it's hit with a primary explosive. It can be lit on fire and C4 will not detonate, but will instead burn like a piece of wood, though it emits poisonous gas, so don't try that with your C4 that you have at home. If you, however, hit C4 with an electrical charge or another primary explosive, be somewhere else. As explosives age, they go through chemical changes, which can make them less effective and less predictable. Ammonium nitrate explosives like ANFO will absorb moisture, become damp, and thus less effective. Nitroglycerin explosives like TNT or dynamite can degrade in warm climates or even excess sunlight. Explosives have expiration dates ranging from a few months for slurry explosives to many years for detonators and cast explosives. But unlike food, it's not that the explosive just becomes a dud over time. It just might not explode with maximum efficiency or it becomes more unstable. So yes, explosives are dangerous even if they're old. For example, the M16 landmine was produced by the US from World War II into the mid-70s and uses trinitrotoluene explosive to bound into the air and explode into a 30 meter radius. It has a 70% chance of going off properly after eight years underground and 12 in tropical climates. And yet 50 years later, chemicals inside of mines might have degraded but they are still very deadly. Today, improvised explosive devices and car bombs get the most news, but 2013 saw a bit less than 11,500 civilians killed by these two methods. Unfortunately, the wars of the last century left 78 countries littered with over 100 million landmines, which still kill 15 to 20,000 people every year, according to the UN. Landmines have been banned by international treaties and a 1980 Geneva Convention, but they're still out there. Cluster bombs and landmines are often dropped from airplanes or shot across large areas by artillery and are therefore never located on a map and are never recovered. In fact, there are an estimated 80 million potentially active bombs littering the country of Laos alone. For more about explosives on the ground, Lisette and Seeker Daily have a story about the woman fighting to find and clean up these deadly landmines. Her group exhibits war-related art, organizes speaking tours, and lobbies U.S. Congress. And in Laos, people on the ground risk their lives to disarm bombs. But for the full experience, you should also watch this video on TestTube, where Evan explores how these mines got everywhere and why we haven't cleaned them up. Thank you for watching D News today. If you have any comments, go down into the comments section and let us know. You can also subscribe for more.